Hey crazy friends, it's Jay with Find Your Crazy. We are a family of nine who live full-time in our RV with five of our kids as we travel around the country to see every national park. But today's video is another RV maintenance and upgrade video. Today we're going to be talking about all things landing gear. Uh, that's your front jacks on your RV. Uh, this video, however, is for my rig, um, which is for the mechanical landing gear. So if you've got a newer rig and you've got hydraulic landing gear, this video is not for you go away. But if you've got an older video, an older RV like us, uh, and you have got the mechanical ones that are driven by a motor, uh, then this is definitely for you. Um, I have got an issue with one of mine, and so I thought I'd take an opportunity to show you that issue uh, and just the whole thing kind of torn apart so you can get an idea of what all's in there. So these are your landing gear, um, or at least where your landing gear should be. Um, obviously you can see uh, one of mine has already been taken out because it wouldn't go up and down and I had to jack up that side of the camper uh, in order to take it out uh, and then fix it. Um, but this is where uh, they normally go. So you have two landing gear. Um, if you've got, again, uh, these are for the mechanical kind that have a motor that drives a screw up and down uh, that raises and lowers it. Uh, you have two sides, so you have the active side um, or the drive side which is over here and the motor is on this side and I'll show you a picture from the inside so you can kind of see it and then there's a bar that goes across um, that drives the slave side or the passive side so the motors over here uh, there's not a motor over here this is the one that I had the issue with which is lucky because it's a lot easier uh, than dealing with having to take the motor off than getting to all of the gears uh, and everything so this is it all torn apart uh, into its pieces. Uh, and so first you have the outer housing. Uh, this is the really the strength part. This is the part that sits up against your frame uh, that enables it to lift and lower your entire um, RV. Uh, and you basically got two sides to it. One side um, has these metal plates welded onto it and that's the side that goes up against the frame. There'll be some plates on your frame as well. Uh, and when you're picking your landing gear, if you have to replace them or you're trying to find parts, um, they are measured by the outer and the inner um, length between these two plates. So from the outside to the outside is one and then from the inside to the inside is the other. And then this is just held in place by a couple of bolts um, that sit in a bracket on the other side. So this isn't really holding any weight. It's basically these bolts are just holding it up against these welded plates on the other side. As you can see, those are welded all the way around. So that's where uh, all of your weight is sitting. And then inside of that piece is this piece. And this is the drive piece. And so you can see up here at the top, um, there is that threaded rod and that rod runs all the way down, um, about halfway down through uh, this piece. And so as that spins, either the motor on the drive side uh, or the gears on the passive side, it turns that, that comes out and that pushes this part down uh, and that is what raises and lowers uh, with the motor and then of course you have your telescoping uh, piece which is the passive piece uh, it is controlled by this pin uh, which goes through here uh, and then through whichever hole you want it to go through and that allows you to manually move uh, it up and down some uh, and then you've got uh, the foot which is what sits on the ground and that's held in uh, by that pin and then these are all the gear pieces for the top that are all obviously taken apart, um, but I'll show you what they look like here in a second when they're put together. Uh, so this is all of the pieces when they're taken apart. And here is a picture of what they look like when they're all together. Pardon the dog. So this is the gear assembly that's in the top part of the housing. So normally all of this is housed uh, in this part right here, right up at the top. And I'll show you that once we get it put back together. But once it's in there, it's kind of hard to see. Uh, and so this is uh, it when it's all taken apart. And I can tell you that I've had issues with my jack two different times and both times it's been right here with this gear assembly. Uh, and so this part comes up through um, the outer housing uh, and then this u piece uh, is what goes in here that holds the top still so it goes on here like 
so. Uh, and then this little pin goes through there. Uh, and that pin is where I have had issues with mine both times that I've had it. Uh, this last time that pin actually just completely sheared off so I had to go get a replacement. The time before, um, you can see that it was digging a groove down into my U-bolt and a whole new gear assembly uh, online is like $40. Uh, and so what I did was I just went and got a 20 cent washer and put it on there and it bridges the gap um, and doesn't let it fall down in there because what was happening was this was sinking down into that groove it was making and you can see on the bottom of this gear that sits on top like that there's this little place that it rides on that pin it doesn't really attach to it it just sits on top of it and so what was happening was this was falling down so much this was coming up and it wasn't riding on that piece anymore and so by putting that washer there uh, that fixed that uh, and then this piece that on the end of it um, it goes next um, and this pin pushes down in there once you get it inside of it uh, and this is what drives it and so this connects piece right here this little hole connects to the bar that goes across from the motor and when it spins uh, it transfers that motion um, from side to side to left to right uh, which drives the long screw up and down and does it so that's what we're gonna do so we're gonna rebuild that um, inside of its housing uh, and then we'll be ready to go. So now we're going to redo the gear assembly. Um, so the first thing uh, is to put um, this U-bolt back in. And so basically just want to raise that up until it's past there. Um, and then it's kind of a pain. You have to get it lined up just right. And then you have to get the inside lined up bit of back and forth and up and down and there we go it clicked in you can kind of see it down in there now it clicked in so now we're gonna put our pin back through and then as I said because I have that issue I'm gonna put this washer in that is not normally necessary but it is for me and these are roll pins that I got all right, so next this goes in there um, and that fits right on top of the pin. And then the next gear goes in. We've got these two collars that go to either side and there is um, a there is a flat side that goes down and go in there. All right. And the other gear sits down in there. Set it so that um, that little groove is up. It'll make it easier to put the pin in. We're just going to drive the shaft all the way through, like so. Line up the hole for the pin. There it is. Give it a little tap. the 
it's flush. Then, in this little groove on this side, this lock goes back on there. There we go. Then you can test it, spinning it around. You can see that it is going up and down just fine. Well, actually you can't see it because it's down at the bottom, but it is going up and down just fine. And then the cap goes back on and you are ready to go. Right, now this is the most annoying part is putting it back in there. Um, I put the foot um, and the other piece back on a while ago just to show you how it went together, but it's really easier to take this off so that you can slide it in there and get it arranged and lined up. So that's what we're gonna do. Once you get it threaded through there, you have to kind of lift it up and down until you find the place where those back tabs seat into the tabs that are already on um, the frame. And so you can see now it's in there. It's still loose because I haven't put these bolts in yet. And so then the final thing is just to put these bolts through. Um, down there so that it holds it in place. Now, again, remember, you're not looking for these um, to necessarily be holding anything. Um, really the, like the grip strength, you know, from the sides, it's not like squishing this in and holding. Everything's sitting uh, on those welded tabs in the back. This is just holding everything back. So this is it on the inside. This is by far the most annoying part because you got to squeeze yourself up in here. Um, but um, basically the same thing. We're going to put, seat it back up in there, put the bolt through, uh, and then attach the drop bar. All right. Um, all right. Now you're ready to attach the drive shaft um, back to uh, this little piece right here. Um, and so all you gotta do is just line it up and put your bolt back there or your pin, whatever you got right there. Um, and then there you go. Now the only thing with this is you have to make sure because this drives both axles up and down the same. They're not independent at all. They're linked together. And so before you attach this, you have to go outside and measure and make sure that they're both up extended the same length. Uh, and you can then manually spin this up or down to get it where you need it. And then you're good to go. So outside, this is the length that you need to measure uh, from the bottom to the outer part of uh, to the top of that outer housing. So from there to there, not worrying about the telescopic piece. Uh, and so this is on the side that's already hooked up. Um, and so I'm gonna measure it. Uh, and then um, so I'll measure that. Uh, and then on the other side, uh, I will extend out uh, until I get the same measurement 
between the top part right there and the bottom of that middle piece, not worrying about the telescopic piece. Uh, and then I'll put the rest of that back together. Well, there you go. That was by no means exhaustive, but uh, at least it gives you a good overview of how your landing gear work, both from the outside uh, and uh, from the inside, at least what all the component parts are. So if you do have an issue, uh, you can try to take it apart, track down what it is and put it back together. There's not a lot of pieces in there. It's not a complicated system. Uh, and so it's one that I think most people can probably um, address uh, by themselves. Really, the hardest part is getting it out, uh, just jacking up the camper um, on one side so that you can take it off and get it out and getting it back in. That's probably the biggest pain. Uh, really taking it apart, putting it back together is not that big of a deal. So I hope this helps you out. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, we would love for you to do that. You can follow our family vlog as well as uh, our family tour guides to all of the national parks. See you next time, guys.